I hope you got the message that I am actually a professional and forgot to put the port in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, hello Amsterdam, I'm so happy to be here again this year. What an awesome audience, what a great conference. I love coming here uh, and, uh, and in having a great week with you all. So today we're going to um, basically have a little cocktail time with Jen. This is, this is always fun to drink with your auntie Jen. I'm kind of everyone's crazy auntie. So um, this is the great mini bar challenge that we're going to talk about today. And uh, snuck into this discussion is also uh, a little bit about native script Vue, which is my favorite way of building native mobile apps with Vue.js. It's incredibly powerful. It's super fun. Let's have some fun today. OK, so my name is Jen Looper. I'm a senior developer advocate at Progress, like Sarah said. I'm the founder and CEO of Vue Vixens. We'll talk about that later, so I won't go into it now. So uh, we have a lot of fun together with our team. And I know some of my native script engineers are here today, and it's a real pr privilege to work with such an incredible, incredible group of colleagues, mostly in Sofia, Bulgaria. Fabulous place. I'm also the organizer of the Boston Vue.js meetup. So uh, I hope you like the logo that I created. <laughs> It's so fun. Um, if, you're, if you know Boston, that's riffing on the Sitgo sign, which is this old neon sign that they threatened to tear down, and the whole town basically rioted, you know, because nobody knows where they are unless they can find themselves according to the Sitgo sign. So all those kids at Boston University. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Jen Looper. And because I am the meetup organizer in Boston VJS, and we do an awful lot of drinking in our Boston meetups, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm the inventor of the Vue Teeny. If you're very, very nice to me, I'll give you the recipe for your own meetups. It's a pretty incredible <laughs> drink, and uh, even the kiwis are on brand, so this, this worked beautifully. It's good stuff. So according to the Wellesley Weston magazine, um, so it must be true, I'm also queen of the apps. So uh, I love to make mobile apps. This is when I was doing a little bit more indie type work, you know, hanging out in my, in my den and looking crazy for the press. This is my specialty, looking crazy for press interviews. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. And I also travel a lot. This is my map from last year, 47 trips. Um, I don't actually remember taking 47 trips, but apparently it happened. Uh, so you can see you know, blips from Asia, North America, fabulous trip to Argentina, um, and in Europe as well. So we're just missing Africa and Antarctica at this point. Um, so I do travel a lot. And I stay in an awful lot of hotels. Some are great, some are not so great. Uh, but the commonality with, with conference hotels, with these hotels that we stay in as developer advocates, is that often they have this kind of mini bar. Uh, fun story, the mini bar at our current hotel is completely empty. <laughs> so you open it up and it's just a wave of despair <laughs> and disappointment. <laughs> so Sophia now, now that's a mini bar. <laughs> So, very nice. Anyway, so we have, uh, you know, these type of mini bars, a little fridge. Some of them are smart, so you actually touch the thing and it charges you. It's impressive. A little IoT integration. I love it. Get your Pringles chips. You're all set. All right. Uh, and I love mobile apps. I've always loved making mobile apps ever since I got my first iPhone, which is like a Snickers bar, about that big. Uh, super fun. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed making, especially iOS uh, mobile apps, but I also, because we use native script, we can also port for Android, so that's special for all the Android folks out there. I'm also a Google developer expert, so I love Android. <laughs> yes, so that's good. Um, <laughs> yes, um, actually, this is my iPhone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, no hate. Uh, anyway, so I also love to build mobile apps using NativeScript View. So this is the logo for NativeScript View, and um, we'll be talking about how we use this custom port of Vue.js for NativeScript to build native mobile apps. Not a web view in sight, no DOM in sight. We're making native mobile apps. So this is a very, very cool and special way. NativeScript is in the same family as React Native, so it's sort of the same idea of you know bridging or using a runtime. To, uh, to create native mobile apps. Put all this information together. I know everyone likes to have 10, 15 slides you know, talking about my own preferences in the beginning of a talk. But this, I do have a reason for doing this this time. And putting it all together, what if, what if we could create kind of the ultimate mobile app, right? That would make my life so much easier in a hotel, you know, by making sense of the minibar. Very important. 
right? Suggesting cocktails to make with what's, what is available in the minibar. You open that thing, and if it's not frickin' empty like, that, like the other morning, you know, you can kind of like figure out by some kind of interesting AI or a machine learning or some kind of interesting way how to make a nice cocktail out of your available ingredients in your minibar. So that's the premise. Uh, while we're at it, let's do it in NativeScript view. Make it a smart app, right? Make it something that has a little machine learning behind it and have some fun while you're doing it, because I don't do anything if I don't have fun. So when your boss comes to you and says, yes, we're going to make a smart app, it's going to be amazing, and we need machine learning behind it, so corral the data scientists and get them in here, because we need to make a smart app. Well, this tweet went around not, not too long ago that you know half the time when companies say they need AI, what they really need is a select clause with group by. Right? So this is, um, this is the premise. Uh, that not every app needs machine learning, not every app needs you know, some kind of intelligence behind it. Uh, but we'll just say that we're going to give it a try. We'll give it a try, okay? So we're going to talk a lot about machine learning in this talk and how you can use this to make your apps intelligent, interesting, and usable. All right, great. I'm going to make a smart app. It's going to make sense of my minibar. How am I going to do this? Well, the first thing you do, as any good data scientist has to do, is you have to gather data. You have to gather a lot of data and you have to massage it. <laughs> and it struck me after burning through my Christmas holidays, uh, sifting through cocktail data, uh, that basically the data scientist's job is to hang out in Excel spreadsheets and figure out all the ways you know, to make formulas work and all that stuff that we don't want to do. That's what I did all over Christmas, so that was exciting. But a great place to go if you want to learn about you know, how to make your data sing, how to make it respond to you, is to go to Kaggle. Um, how many Kagglers are in here? Yeah, okay, Chris. <laughs> well, gotcha. Um, Kaggle is a great, great resource, and they have um, a lot of cool contests that you can go and you can join and build, and, and uh, you can also look for data sets. So this is kind of the place I went to to find a cocktail data set, and it turns out there is one. Someone uh, scraped the cocktaildb.com, which I think a lot of people probably use for demos, it's crowdsourced, so people are just inputting data information and slapping in a picture, and that is the, uh, that is the, the data set. But there's only 500 of them in this data set. So in my opinion, there is not enough cocktailing going on here. This is, not, this, is not a good, this is not a great example. Also, it's crowdsourced. So there's not much quality control. So I didn't really want to use that data set. <coughs> I, so I started kind of trolling the internet and kind of looking for other ideas of how to get the data I needed for my app. And uh, there's a lady named Beth Squarecki who created the bot cocktails. Um, and in her feed, as she was you know, uh, showing how she made the bot cocktails, um, someone mentioned, uh, what do you use for the recipes? I'd love to see one made with the Mr. Boston Bartender's Guide. Does anyone know what the Mr. Boston Bartender's Guide is? <laughs> OK, I didn't either. It's this thing, which I have jammed into my purse. This thing. <laughs> this is the official Mr. Boston's bartending guide from 1935. You can tell prohibition in the US had just like been turned off, and all hell broke loose. So um, in this bartending guide, which came out in the 30s, you know, the first thing you turn to, well, there's a lot of absinthe in here. There's also a lot of. <laughs> um, uh, creme de menthe, Mr. Boston whiskey rum, but there's a lot of egg yolks and egg whites. That's one feature of the Mr. Boston data set. I don't know, in the 30s, I think everyone was dumping eggs into their cocktails. It's horrific, but it's very um, interesting to, to get an idea of how people used to drink. Anyway, the Mr. Boston's official bartending guide became the magical little red book that every bartender used to have. Um, so if somebody asked for some weird cocktail like the fog cutter, my dad always asks for a fog cutter, and no one knows what this thing is. So they would just you know, look it up in the guide. So this is the guide. And wouldn't it be great if we could get the data out of here somehow and, uh, and use it in our apps? Guess what? <laughs> There's a website. There's a website. It's uh, Mr. Boston's website, mrboston.com, I believe. The rights to Mr. Boston was, was bought by Sazerac. If you've ever been to New Orleans and had a Sazerac, that is serious drinking. It'll take the top of your head right off. So um, Sazerac owns Mr. Boston. Turns out they have a scrapable API. So you start digging into the, uh, into the inspector, and you can see that there is uh, a way to grab recipes out of this API 
straight out of the inspector. So guess what I did also over Christmas? So I scraped the hell out of it. <laughs> so I scrape, scrape, scrape. Um, and in fact, in Kaggle, there are actually scripts to help you scrape data. <laughs> so it's all very nefarious. But anyway, that's airmail. That's the airmail cocktail, which is also in here out of that API. So it's, you know, there's pretty good quality stuff here. And I thought, okay, this is a good data set. There's 995 cocktails off of that API once you clean it and clean it and clean it. And, uh, and, and I know their quality because they're in Mr. Boston's guide, right? So this is, this is authority. Okay, now, all your cocktails belong to me. So we go back to Kaggle. We take that magical ex Excel spreadsheet of scraped data, and then we toss it into Kaggle. So now if you go onto Kaggle, you can find the Mr. Boston cocktail data set. And you can start using some interesting little scripts, some little Python scripts, to see you know, interesting data, uh, interesting facts about this data. For example, um, vodka, by far, is the most popular uh, first ingredient. And it makes sense, right? So your data has to kind of make sense if you're going uh, to use this kind of thing in your apps. So you start to learn and to really appreciate and um, understand your data by looking at, looking at it you know, through Kaggle. So vodka, light rum, and gin, and tequila are the most, you know, the four most used ingredients. That makes total sense, right? It's very helpful. All right, now we're cooking. I don't know what he's doing, but it seems to be popular. All right, step two, time to build a mobile app. Isn't this awesome? So I'm actually scaffolding out a native mobile app using the NativeScript CLI. So last year, I think I demoed how to use the Vue CLI to create uh, um, uh, a NativeScript view app, but here I'm using the NativeScript CLI because, well, well I'll tell you why later. But um, the cool thing is, is that now you can just use TNS create. TNS is Telerik NativeScript, that's our CLI. TNS create, and then it'll prompt you to either use Angular or, or Vue or no framework at all. So that is really, really helpful. So you scaffolded yourself an app using TNS create, and it looks like this. Isn't that nice? So, uh, boy, this looks really Vue-ish, right? So there's your nice template block, script block, a nice style block scoped with the uh, SAS already ready to go if you like SAS. So um, here it's all ready to roll with your single file component and everything is, everything is looking great. So this is what is scaffolded out for you. Extremely helpful. And then you can start running this in your emulators. You just do TNS run iOS dash dash bundle. If you say dash dash bundle three times, Sean Larkin appears because it's Webpack. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, run it in your emulators. Run it for iOS, run it for Android, and it'll give you a blank NativeScript view app, and then you can start building and building as you go. So in my opinion, the first thing you have to do once you've got your app scaffolded out is to fix up the UI. So now this is, I'm going to give you a hint. You need to start saying ooh and ah, OK? Because I'm going to show you Jen's design skills. So, OK, this is the icon. This is the logo. I love you guys. And this is the home screen. <laughs> Woo! So it's amazing what you can do with rounded corners and a nice font. <laughs> so. Um, but actually, there's very little CSS going on here, and, uh, and it ends up looking really nice. I'm actually quite happy with this. So what's in my bar? Mixology. Oh, did you notice that the, the pun? So it's mixed with a capital M and an L, Mixology, Sperm Machine Learning. Okay. Okay, anyway. All right, we've scaffolded our app, we've fixed the UI, thank God, and now we're up to step three already, which we have to leverage our data. We have to leverage our data. So I'm asking a question. I have tequila in my minibar. Uh, what can I make? Well, guess what? This is actually not a job for machine learning. This is back to that tweet. Uh, this is actually a job for some kind of database. Firebase, in my, in my experience, works really nice for this sort of thing. You could use Kinvey. You could use um, all sorts of other sort of NoSQL uh, databases. But for my intents and purposes, I needed to use Firebase. Because, first of all, we've got an incredible plugin from our plugin master, Eddie Verbruchen, who's the greatest Dutchman of all time, in my opinion. You know, Rembrandt has nothing, <laughs> nothing on Eddie Verbruchen, <laughs> um, who created the NativeScript Firebase plugin. And uh, the, I needed to use Firebase because I wanted to make sure that I could also use TensorFlow. Because for some, well, it's kind of obvious why, but Google is, uh, is doing all of its machine learning stuff within the Firebase um, modality right now. The reason for that is because all of your data is flowing through Firebase database, and then the machine learning can, can grab it right away. So yay, Google, thank you. Um, take a look at my data. I've got nothing to hide. Yes. 
Um, so, okay, so the next thing we need to do is take our Excel spreadsheet, uh, convert it to JSON, there's a tool to do that online, <laughs> and then import that into Firebase so that you can start querying it for the cocktail that you need. Just don't try to join. <laughs> anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, in order to use Firebase, there are several steps you need to do. It's all very well documented in the plugin documentation. But you're going to go ahead and import Firebase from this beautiful plugin. And then you're going to initialize it, Firebase in it. And then you're going to assign Firebase to the prototype so that you can use your Firebase instance all the way through your app. So this is all you need to do, really, to get Firebase up and running. There's also a couple files you need to um, include in your, in, your, um, in your app, but that's, that's all documented out. So very easy. Ooh, it's time for a demo. All right, Wi-Fi, don't fail me now. All right, I'm going to fire up QuickTime. So um, hold on, I'm just going to start a movie. Okay, there it is. Okay, hello iPhone. That's large. Okay, let's open up Mixology and just see what we can use if, for example, I open my mini bar and I have a bottle of gin. New recipes, yeah, let's try again. Again, Wi-Fi. I should have done this offline, here we go. Okay, so this is a, a classic Mr. Boston cocktail, the Twin Six Tahitian tea. I could use a Tahitian tea, like right about now. Mm. Leap year cocktail. Gin and gin and vermouth and lemon juice. I was going to take the head. Okay. Um, but bourbon is one of my favorite cocktails, if I can grab it. Uh, it has a really good example, if I could pull it up. Anyway, Wi-Fi is crapping out on me again. Anyway, that's the demo of a very basic app built with Firebase so that you can select you know, an av a, a random 20 cocktails out of your Firebase database. Nothing too dramatic going on here. So that is the first demo. It's not that great, right? <laughs> it's, it's OK. It's OK. But we can do better, right? All right. Let's run the bottles through some kind of image recognition service, right? So I'm sitting in front of my mini bar like a savage, you know, with my iPhone taking pictures to try to figure out what's in that thing. Let's try Google Cloud Vision API. That's all accessible via a nice REST API. You can use that. That works great. Well, interestingly enough, if you take a, a basic photo of these kind of small bottles, we, we, okay, in Boston we call these nips, and, and the British amongst us are going to giggle because that means something else. I mean, with these, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> in Boston, this is the fifth food group, people, OK? So, but if you run the pictures of nips <laughs> through, <laughs> through, <laughs> I told you, right? Through um, the, the image service, all you're going to get back is that it's for sure a bottle, right? That's all it's going to tell you, because that's, that's what you're looking at. So it's not going to be extremely specific. Also, not very impressive. So this is a job for a custom trained model. And here's where the, the tires meet the road, the rubber meets the road. Custom trained model. Well, what, are, what am I talking about with a model? What is this model of which you speak of? Model is referring to a mathematical model of sample data built using a machine learning algorithm in order to make predictions without being explicitly programmed. OK, it's just going to help, uh, help the machines make predictions. So now you need to train your model. Now, you can go and learn TensorFlow and you know, brush up on your Python and, and get all excited about that good stuff. But there's actually no reason in this, for this use case to do that, because there are really good Google code labs. One of them is called TensorFlow for Poets. It comes in about four different parts. It's really helpful, because it allows you to train data and then retrain on your own data. Um, so what you do in this code lab is they give you a whole bunch of um, flower pictures. And it's training a custom model to figure out if it's looking at a rose or a daisy by you know, color and petal length and that sort of thing. It's absolutely lovely. Well, you know, I wanted to retrain it on nips. So um, that's what I did. <laughs> so to do this, you need a local installation of TensorFlow. You need Python. Python. You need a bunch of images saved in folders. You need a bunch of images saved in folders. And this is kind of the hard part. You need the Python scripts from this code lab that you can just rerun. I use Python 3. You can get into trouble if you're on an earlier version of Python with some of the stuff. So be careful what version you're using. 
here is the hot tip of the day. Uh, you, it's really hard to find enough images to uh, get any kind of proper custom training going on. So you can use FFmpeg library to convert movies to images. So you run around your kitchen, twirling bottles, take a movie, and then after like a six second iPhone movie, you can use this to convert to like maybe 200 images. It's a quick and dirty way of getting an awful lot of data. So that's my hot tip. So you can use that. That's what I did. And then you're going to use MobileNet, which is included in this code lab to retrain on your custom categories. So you make a list of the custom categories you want to create, amaretto, bourbon, brandy, coffee, liqueur, cognac, that sort of thing. By the way, MobileNet is an efficient convolutional neural network for mobile vision applications. So it's used in this code lab. You can go ahead and reuse it. Why not? Then you can test your new model. Remember, this is the same image I just ran into uh, across Google's API. Well, on my custom model, I get 99 percent sure that this thing is whiskey. That's great. That's really, really, really accurate. So this makes me so happy. Um, so this is, a, this is a good thing. And then it kind of falls apart because you actually need to use this model. So this is the worst part of the whole experience. Um, this is what actually makes you use the bottles. So what you have to do <laughs> is you have to convert the files at the moment. So TensorFlow is going to produce a float trained model. You have to convert it to quantized format in TF Lite format. This is a lot of mumbo jumbo, but basically this plugin has to use TF Lite on mobile, TensorFlow Lite on mobile, and it has to be quantized, which means you're going to lose accuracy. So um, it's, it's an optimized format, and because it's optimized, it's going to lose accuracy, which is kind of really unfortunate. Uh, to convert, you're going to use a little library called Toco, the TensorFlow Lite optimizing converter. So you go ahead and use that to take your PB file and convert it to TF Lite, right? And now you have your TensorFlow Lite file and a list of labels. So you're going to verify that the TF Lite file is quantized by just running it through one more script. So there's literally crap tons of Python scripts going on here. And I know we love Python, right? So now, thank God, we're back to JavaScript. We can use it in our app. <laughs> OK. So here, um, I have built out my UI and my NativeScript View app. I need to take a picture, and I save it in the width and height that the model is expecting, 224 by 224. And I go ahead and send that data, the image source, over to MLKit to, to try to identify. So I query MLKit using my custom model, which is brand new in the, uh, in the plugin, and we have this ability now to consume these custom models. Uh, I'm going to ask for a max result five. I just want the five top labels that it's going to return. Uh, and it has to be quantized, so the type must be quantized. And then I'm just going to take my results and, uh, and see what, what, is, what is given back to me. Demo time. All right. Some vodka. Let's try some vodka. Let's just let's just roll the dice. All right. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> because I train I so it thinks that anything white is either Sambuca or Limoncello. <laughs> it's really it tells you how, uh, how the, the accuracy really goes down. But let's try a more recognizable bottle. <laughs> Stop laughing. It's your Auntie Jen. <laughs> it's your Auntie Jen. We can't do wrong here. So it's time to tank away, people. It's my daughter's camera. Ah, 48% gin. It knew it, so it's right. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I've really got a lot. I'm just curious what will happen if we do two. Let's do brandy and bourbon. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> it's just, there just isn't enough data to, to give you really um, great results. Although, maybe if we could do a float model, maybe it would maybe it'd be a little more accurate. Anyway, so that's that demo, so that's exciting. 
more or less OK. More or less OK. OK. Yay, custom models. We got the custom models working. That's amazing. But um, we can do more. We can do more, right? So in my opinion, AI should be weird, a little bit weird. So there's a really cool website called AI Weirdness by Janelle Shane. She takes all kinds of data sets and runs them through convolutional neural networks, and, and really strange things tend to happen. It, like these networks become obsessed with Harry Potter fan fiction and creates all kinds of narratives. It's super, super fun. Um, so I found a library that she recommended, which is called TextGen RNN. It's a text generating neural network that generates words that seem to make sense, kind of, sort of, in context. Uh, it iterates through your words and figures out patterns and then generates really weird stuff. And some of the weird stuff that it's generated were um, a bunch of seventh graders took a bunch of ice cream flavors and they ran this through the neural network and we have things like peanut butter slime and pumpkin trash break, which is my personal favorite. They also have uh, the cookie recipes, uh, low fuzzy feats, merry hunger poppers. Uh, sugar person, sugar masts. I love it. But this is a really good one. So somebody ran a whole bunch of knitting patterns through this thing and then knit what was generated. And it's really creepy. <laughs> so so um, we're not worried at all about the AIs taking over. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, so let's do this. Let's run our cocktail recipes through TextGen RNN, okay, which you can do locally. So all you have to do to do that is to clean your data one more time, uh, gather each recipe into a block, just like a text block, and that's the way this, uh, this program is going um, to sift through all the strings that it finds, all the phrases that it finds, and create recipes. So these are legitimate recipes run through a neural network. So you feed it to TextGen RNN locally, and then ask for a certain number of, of um, recipes to be generated. And things like roomed Swiss menther comes back, so that's the title, uh, with light rum, citrus brandy, I don't know what cat bane is, shake it with ice and strain it into a chilled old-fashioned glass, got that part, that's good. But anyway, I asked this thing to generate for me 500 fake cocktails, very fun, and I imported them into my app, parsed them right through, and then I created a very fun user interface that allows you to shake, so you have your cocktail shaker, so you shake to get a fake cocktail. And at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to have a volunteer. <laughs> I'll try to turn on the sound. I don't think it's going to work because it's tethered. Um, and while I'm looking down, I would love for someone to come back on stage. Look, this is a coffee cocktail. Oh, I'm not showing the demo. That's terrible. There we go. So you shake. Uh, shake again. Brandy and brandy, and egg white, again with the egg whites. Francis the tequila. Mmm. <laughs> ah. I want to shake something that I could actually make for somebody. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to make for you, but anyway, if anyone would like to have bourbon on the rocks, I'm happy to oblige. Who would like some bourbon on the rocks? <laughs> Here. Who wants it? <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> you got to get the rocks yourself. <laughs> All right, enough with the drinking. Um, by the way, everyone should partake responsibly. OK. So that was the demo. And uh, at this point in time, I would just like to say one more thing, one more really cool, exciting thing which is that NativeScript View is now officially supported by Progress. So please visit. <laughs> yes. So please visit nativescriptview.org. Uh, learn more about this really amazing project that started with a lovely college student in Hungary, Igor, and grew into something truly amazing and truly special that we can use now to create beautiful, performant native mobile apps. And what this means is that we're trying to guarantee plugin compatibility. So usually we'll have, you know, um, our plugins will have uh, guaranteed compatibility for our Angular port, but now also for Vue. So we're trying to get everything on par. Uh, we have available enterprise support if you get stuck. Not that you're going to get stuck, <laughs> but don't DM me on Slack, please. <laughs> um, engagement of the NativeScript core team. Where's my NativeScript core teamers? 
right there. They're incredible. He's on the phone. Get off the phone. <laughs> um, I'm being reported to HR right now. Uh, webinars, w webinars, we give lots of webinars, content creation, and then we offer this parity between vanilla, Angular, and Vue implementations for native script Vue. So super, super cool. I will drink to that uh, in just a little while. So uh, you can get all the code for this demo on Mixology Mobile. And a big gratitude to Igor, the maintainer and creator of native script Vue, to Eddie, and to Jana <laughs> Rodriguez. Thanks very much.